offer summer camp this summer. And uh, while the word unprecedented is way overused, I'll just say this is going to be a unique summer. Uh, um, we're committed as an organization, both professionals and lay leaders, uh, to putting together the, the best uh, summer camp experience uh, that we can, and of course, the safest um, given the situation in the world. Uh, we have excellent professionals and lay leaders. Uh, I see some of the lay leaders on the call. I'm going to introduce the professionals. Um, Deb Kirshner, uh, our camp director, and Allison Lurie, our assistant camp director, and they'll introduce you to Sandy Horvath, who's with us today, and I see some other counselors and staffers um, who, who have joined us as well. And um, for hopefully, you know, during this call, we'll be able to answer a lot of the questions that you have, and, and you'll understand probably that the guidance that we're getting from the state and national organizations, you know, is coming in, and we're digesting it and, and pl making plans and policies and trying to put all of that in writing so that you'll be able to see that. Um, Deb and Allison have been working, I think, literally around the clock since um, the first guidance came out uh, to try to make uh, this the, the, the best situation that they can and, and um, get kids out of the house and into a fun environment. So I'm going to pass it over to Deb and Allison, but I'll be around uh, to answer any questions as well. Thanks for all, Thank you, everyone, for coming. Great, thank you, Scott. Um, I just want to start by saying, I'm just going to quote the, the first sentence in the letter that most of you received. And it says, it is with tremendous excitement and cautious optimism that we announced the opening of the JCC day camps this summer. And that really sums up everything for me. Uh, we have been working hard and before I forget, I do want to thank Scott and Judy, Sandy and Allison and all of the management staff and I also want to uh, thank uh, Shannon Lane and um, Emily Bannock for all their help at uh, getting everything um, that we need and have asked for to get things running in a safe and orderly fashion. Uh, this summer camp is not going to be anything like it's been in the past. Um, and we're not the only ones in this situation, obviously. It's going to be new to us as staff members, new to you as parents, new to the campers. Um, and obviously we're not the only ones in this situation. It's a worldwide situation. That doesn't mean that we're not going to have fun. And if anyone knows better than, than Sandy Horvath, fun is, is her middle name. So we will continue to uh, have the best summer we possibly can and the safest po possible program that we can uh, provide. Um, we don't want to convince anyone one way or the other on a decision. We cannot guarantee that there isn't a risk here and that someone may, you know, come down with the temperature or unfortunately get sick. We want to answer all the questions that you have. There may be some questions that come up that maybe today we don't have the answers to, but we will certainly get those answers and get those out to you. So um, please keep that in mind. You know, we, we want this to be your decision. We want you to feel, um, you know, that we respect whatever decision you make. And we will talk a little bit further about those of you who, you know, unfortunately will need to pull out and hopefully we will see you back again next summer. So on that note, I am going to turn over the, the screen here. And, and I will also add that um, besides this being the first time that we're going to be doing camp with the COVID, uh, this is the first time, and I wanna congratulate all of you for being, being the first people who have done the first ever um, question and answer on our, uh, our camp um, uh, link here. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Sandy, who's gonna explain a little bit about how we're gonna run today's meeting. All right, hi everybody. We're so excited to have all of our future campers and potential campers for this summer. The way our question and answer forum is going to work, I'm so appreciative that so many people have sent us their fantastic questions that they have for our director and assistant director. We were able to compile them into a really expansive list. A lot of the questions you can imagine are very similar to other people's questions. So we've compiled this list and Deb and Allison 
Allison are gonna take turns answering those questions. After all those questions get answered, we will start with a few extra questions that people might have while they're sitting here watching this Q&A. If you have a question that is not being talked about, you can feel free to put it into the chat because only the host can see the chat. And then if we don't get to that question, we can then ask it at the end. If it's a more, if it's a question that requires a little bit more thought and explanation, I'm happy to email it to you as well. Um, feel free to put your email in there. And I've actually talked to the majority of you through our summer camp email. Um, please try and wait towards the end to ask those questions because our list is so expansive. It's probably going to cover just about everything you could possibly be thinking of, but we're not mind readers. So if you feel the need to put something in there, I'm happy to try and get that to Deb and Allison. Again, we are so excited to sit here with you and to go over our camp. Again, keep in mind, um, questions can change. The state can change different rules. So even though we're answering all these questions, things can change in the future. So um, let's all get excited and have a fantastic Q&A. It's nice to talk to you. <laughs> okay, thank you, Sandy. Um, I'm gonna start and I'm gonna try to make it seem like I'm not reading off of something. So <laughs> I'm gonna just kind of go through some of the questions um, that you might have. Um, one of the biggest questions was, um, how's the morning drop off gonna look? You know, usually we have the buses and before care and, and people kind of come at different times. How are we gonna handle, you know, 200 cars coming in at one shop? So what we're doing, first of all, is we're gonna have four different drop off locations in different areas of the parking lot. Um, so the kids will be able to be behind um, barriers so they'll be safe. Um, so you're gonna have, to, each unit will have their own drop off. So kindergarten and first grade will have one, second and third will have one, um, second, third, fourth, and fifth, and then our hall team, our older sixth through ninth grade campers will have one as well. So there'll be four different locations, averaging about 50 cars in each. Um, so that's kind of how we're gonna be doing that for both the morning drop off and the afternoon pickup. Um, and what we'll be able to do in those locations is the groups are gonna have a group of um, 10, um, 10 kids per group, and those groups will be able to be socially distanced from each other. So they'll all be able to be six feet apart. So at least six feet apart. There's, there's plenty of room um, for everybody to spread out. So that's kind of how we're doing that piece. Um, the way the morning is going to run is it's gonna be that as the cars pull up, we're gonna ask you to please take your kids out of the car. We're gonna come over, your, counts, your child's counselors are gonna come over. We're gonna do a quick temperature check. What I would really strongly recommend is before you even get in the car, before you come to camp, maybe do a quick temperature check so that way there are not too many surprises when you do come. So on the off chance your child is running a slight fever, um, you'll know about that beforehand. But that's just, that's just a suggestion. Um, the way OEC explains it, anything that's over 100 is considered a fever and you'd have to leave for that day. Um, so 100.1 and up, you would be asked to um, you know, have your child go home for the day and then they would ultimately need to be fever free without medication for 24 hours. So I'm hoping that makes sense. Um, and the same procedure is gonna go for the staff. The staff will be tested um, in every morning. They'll be checked for their fever and, and they have to abide by the same 24 hour policy as well, the same fever um, as the campers do. So I'm hoping that makes sense. Uh, some of the other questions was in terms of, are we testing for COVID? We're not gonna test for COVID. We're gonna ask that if you have any concerns or, or, or situation in your family to please have your child tested prior to the summer. Um, and that's gonna really hold true throughout the summer. If there's any point where um, somebody in the family has tested positive, positive or there's any concerns, you know, we ask that you please be transparent with us um, and, and just let us know so we can, we can get the word out to our families. Um, the way our policy is gonna go, if 
your child has a fever for more than 48 hours, we're gonna ask you to please bring your child to the pediatrician and have them checked out. As soon as we get confirmation back that they're okay to come back to camp with a doctor's note, they are absolutely 100% welcome back in camp. Um, on the off chance that somebody in the group does test positive, that child would have to leave camp, obviously be cleared by a doctor, you know, after a certain number of days that they are, they are free from, the co from COVID. And then the other nine children in that bunk, unfortunately, just due to exposure, will also um, be let, we'll let them know that, you know, a child has tested positive in the bunk and that they, um, they are going to need to, to quarantine for the 14 days. So I'm hoping that basically makes sense. Um, you know, we've we've had you know different people ask different questions. One of the one of the questions was, you know, what about how do we limit you know people's um, travels outside of camp? We can't. <laughs> you know, we we just ask that you please continue to do what you've been doing: social distancing, wearing masks when necessary. Um, and it's one of those do unto others as you would want others to do unto you. You know, we want to keep everybody in our camp safe. So we ask that you please don't put yourself in a situation where you're ultimately um, exposing others. So I'm, I'm hoping that answers that question. Um, I, I don't think I'm missing anything on that, but if I am, I'm, I'm happy to, to answer any, any questions on that. Um, and I think I'm going to turn it over to Deb, who's going to talk a little bit about masks. Okay. Um, the question is, are campers expected to wear masks? Um, they are not expected to wear masks. We are not going to stop anyone. If, if a parent feels that they want their child to wear them, you know, that will be a, a personal decision, but they are not required to wear them. Our staff, however, will be wearing them. Um, throughout the day, any time that a staff is within six feet of any child, um, they will obviously have them on. Um, we are going to obviously need to allow them a couple of minutes to take that off and breathe a little fresh air. Uh, I know most of you have been wearing masks and know what it's like to wear those outside in 60, 70 degree weather. You know, this summer, you're talking 89 degree weather with that mask is going to become very uncomfortable. So they do, we'll have the opportunity to step back from the group, you know, take a little break, and we will have counselors, um, you know, that, that will be able to be with the group while the, the other counselor does that. Um, when we are in the building, and we do not expect, we hope, we hope, hope, hope that uh, we have a good weather, that we have good weather this summer, um, we are planning to stay outdoors under any circumstance other than a dangerous one. So if it is raining, sprinkling, um, we are going to be outside. Please dress your child appropriately. If they get wet, they get wet. In fact, they, I'm, I'm looking for that big rain downpour that's, that's safe to be outside. And I think every child and staff are going to love that because they're not allowed to do that at home, usually. So um, please be aware that we are going to stay outside as much as possible. If it is a dangerous situation, we are fortunate enough to have the indoor facility. Unfortunately, when we do make that transition from outside to inside, the rules do change in terms of um, mask wearing and groupings and whatnot. Once those campers go inside, um, the, the regulation is that they need to be in one room, meaning even the auditorium can only accommodate 10 campers. So if we have 20 groups, we're going to need 20 rooms in the JCC. Um, we are hoping, you know, we do, we have worked that out. So we, we do have that space, but, um, you know, hopefully we won't need to use that very often. If we do need to go inside, um, Whatever the policy is with our JCC members and the, uh, you know, walking through the hallways will be the same regulation that we will have for camp. 
that is still in the works. So we will, you know, certainly get that to you. Um, most likely they will need to wear masks to get from the outside to the room that they're going to. But once they are in that room with their 10 um, bunk mates and their staff, um, they will be able to take those masks off. Okay. Um, we had a question about if, if the campers are allowed in camp with masks and social distancing, why can't the same rules apply for transportation? And the answer to that question is um, basically looking at it uh, similar to a room. They look at a bus like a room. So that bus can only transport 10 campers at a time, even with the mask, even with the social distancing. So um, obviously financially, we would need many, many buses uh, to accommodate uh, that ruling. So that is the reason that we will not be able to, unfortunately, provide transportation this summer. Okay. Um, the JCC will be providing masks for all of our staff, and we will have masks on hand for the occasions that um, we will need them for, for campers. Um, but again, we won't be supplying them for campers on a regular daily basis because uh, that is not something that we are required to, to have the campers uh, use. Um, our next question is, are bathrooms being sprayed and wiped down after every use? Um, we actually are very excited to announce that this summer, we are for the first time having a clean team. And this clean team, is going to basically be cleaning all day long. There will be um, maintenance people that are basically stationed at the bathroom areas. There'll be, pe there'll be maintenance people walking throughout the grounds and cleaning up. Um, all of our staff will have um, sanitizers on hand. That was also another question. Do we have, um, will we have sanitizers? Each of, we are, we are, looking to get, or we have ordered rather, um, five gallon jugs of sanitizers. So we have plenty of sanitizers on hand. That sanitizer will then be put into a smaller bottle such as a Windex size bottle. All of the counselors will have that with them throughout the day. All the specialists will have them. It'll be washing everyone's hands with the sanitizers before they go into a program. They'll be washing their hands when they leave that program. So it'll be done a minimum of two times, if not more, if, if need be, throughout um, each period of the day. Um, in terms of the bathrooms with the, the cleaning, a pod or a bunk, as we refer to them, the group of 10, can go into a bathroom at the same time. Now, our groups are going to be co-ed. So you know we're looking approximately five girls, five boys in a bunk. Those five can go into the, the bathrooms at the same time. However, if a five-year-old needs to go to the bathroom while that pod is in the bathroom, they will need to wait until that entire pod comes out, that bunk comes out, the bathroom is clean, sterilized, and then the next child can come in, okay? And if you have further questions about that, feel free to, to shoot those to, to Sandy. Um, Will there be extra cleaning of changing rooms and bathrooms in between groups? I think I just answered that. Um, in terms of the locker rooms, we're gonna talk about that a little further when we talk about our, our swim program. Okay, I'm gonna turn it back to Allison. Right, it's back, it's back to me. Okay, so a um, couple of questions that came in talked about bunk uh, counselors and, and how are we gonna, um, interacting and how can we enforce the social distancing. Um, counselors are going to be required to stay obviously with their group. So, um, you know, they are going to social distance with each other. I mean, the two counselors that are going to be in the group together, they'll be able to be together. But for example, somebody who's a counselor for a second and third grade bunk, if there's another counselor in the second and third grade bunk, um, the only way they're going to be able to obviously communicate is if they are social distanced and wearing their mask. Um, and we are going to strictly enforce this policy um, across the board. Um, the same thing will be for our specialists. Our specialists um, that are going to be there to um, work with the kids, they're also going to be social distanced um, so that they're not um, 
you know, so they're not exposing, um, you know, any, any additional uh, staff people. Um, as far as um, helping kids with sunscreen, um, that, that question had come in. Um, what we're going to, you know, we're going to help, obviously, with the, with the kids in the sunscreen. Their, their senior counselor and their junior counselor will have masks on, they'll have gloves, um, and they'll certainly help any kids that need help with their sunscreen. That being said, and I know there's a lot of people that don't love the spray sunscreen. I get it. I know there's people that really like it, people that really don't, and I understand both sides. I do. It's just that is an, I guess, a, a more effective way of, of making sure that, um, you know, it's touchless, really, for the most part. So, um, you know, if that's something that you would, um, you know, consider, obviously the counselors would be the ones spraying it. We wouldn't be asking kids to, to spray themselves. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Um, and then I think I'm, I'm punting it back to Deb for a couple of questions. Okay. The next question is, can you provide a list of supplies and food that I will need to bring as a, as a parent? Um, we will obviously be handing out, for those of you who have been in our program before, you know that we do provide you with a parent's manual, answers many, many, many of the questions that you might have. Um, this year, obviously, we need to rewrite that and make changes, modifications to that um, manual. You will be getting that ahead of time with all the list of supplies that you will need. Basically, we will not be providing snacks this year or any um, meals because we won't be offering the overnight programs. Um, you have the option of, of providing your child with snacks. There's a time for a morning snack. There's a time for an afternoon snack. And then concerning the lunch, um, different this year, we will not be able to collect everybody's lunches, put it in the bin and put it into our, our walk-in refrigerator. So we are asking that you um, put your lunch into container lunch box and provide some source of uh, coolness in there, uh, you know, a, an ice pack or something, um, those lunches will remain in their bags until lunchtime, okay? Um, you will also need, obviously, your bathing suit towel, uh, the sunscreens, um, again, to have a little less contact, that the sunscreens will hopefully have the child's name, printed on them and will be kept in their backpacks um, or bags that they bring rather than us collecting them. It'll be less um, hands-on um, like we have had in the, in the past. Water, and as I mentioned at the beginning of this meeting, there are some, some questions that we are still trying to do some brainstorming on and we have close to 100 people on this, this meeting and you know, would love input for anyone who has a, 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 an idea that we may not have thought about. Um, and I ask, you know, I welcome you to do that throughout the summer. Like I said before, this is going to be new territory for all of us um, and, and certainly open to any suggestions that any of you have. The water situation we, in the past, for those of you who have been in our program, know that we have had those big you know, Gatorade jugs and the kids would come up and press the spigot and fill their bottles. Um, or we would have the paper cups and then they would take the drink and then refill it. Um, obviously that is not very sanitary. You know, if you take, and I have my little props here today, if you take this water bottle and you're putting it under the spigot, you're not only holding it, the spigot with your hand, that can, can't be contaminated, but your mouth has now been on the top of that bottle. Um, so there are a couple of options that we've been looking for. And again, welcome to hear anyone else's ideas, but we are going to ask that you provide your children with whatever drinks they will need throughout the day. Um, one bottle is not going to do it. <laughs> we, we are constantly drinking throughout the day to keep everybody hydrated. It is hot out there. We do obviously have shaded areas, but water is extremely important. We are not going to let any child or any staff person go without water, but we are 
very much asking you to help us in that area and provide it. Whether you want to give your child, you know, four or five bottles um, such as this, or um, another option is the mega <laughs> jug here. Um, these, I just, you know, I just looked up, you can find them at Walmart, Amazon. Um, they're about, they range, but you can get them for as cheap as, you know, nine, $10. The plus to something like this, and it, it might be a little heavy for those younger ones, but it does have the handle. Um, the plus is that they are opening it with the spigot, their mouth and germs are going on this mouthpiece. If, if it gets down to the point where they have emptied their bottle for the day, this part, the top comes off. So this part has not had their mouth on it. It could go under a sink and be refilled. Um, and you can certainly put ice in this to keep it cold throughout the day. So again, um, obviously not ideal options, but some options. And again, we are open to any, any ideas or, or different options that anyone um, would like to provide us with. Um, okay, again, just a reminder, please label everything. Those water jugs, a lot of people are going to have the, the, this year. Um, my little sample here with my Kirshner name on it, you know, so you want to find something that you can get a, uh, a pen that, um, a permanent marker uh, for, for that. As, long, as well as you know, bathing suits, towels, everything else that you're gonna be using for the summer. All right, I am, okay. Let's see. Will there be some type of shelter-like tents that will be put up to allow kids shelter from the sun? Um, we, have a lot of shaded areas where our picnic tables um, have been. We are also very excited to announce that, um, you know, for those of you who know the size of our facility and the areas that we have been using, um, we were the other day up at camp and walking around with the landscaper and our maintenance crew and have opened up or will be opening up some new areas, which will be very exciting to those campers, you know, even if they've been there five, six years, areas that we haven't used in a long time. So um, space-wise, in terms of shaded areas, we've at least doubled that space, if not more. Um, there will be, you know, large areas for our specialists to be under shade. Um, and most of those picnic areas we had talked about actually putting up some tarps, but thinking further about it, I know we have been out in the rain and the, the tree, um, the trees actually form, you know, an umbrella um, almost. So you're pretty protected from the rain um, under those trees and there is shaded areas. As far as the sports field, you know, we will be looking for, we will have uh, a tent that will be at the archery range. Um, and the rest of that will remain the way we, we have had it before. We are going to be opening up the, um, I don't know how many of you know, but there is, there is a building out there that we haven't used um, off of the field that also has two additional bathrooms that mainly the Hull team, our sixth through ninth graders, will be using that space uh, to store their belongings. They'll have more room to spread out so those Four, we're hoping, you know, about four pods or bunks within Haltzim will be able to store their bags in there and use those bathrooms that are, are closest to their area. Okay. Um, okay. Um, yeah, do you want me to start with uh, the pool? I can do the pool. Sure. Cool. sure. Okay. So um, some people were questioning um, the pool schedule. So the beauty of the outdoor pool is that it's outdoors. So we are able to have more than one group swim at one time. As long as they are social distance in the pool, we're, we're looking to probably have, we're thinking about four different groups swimming at the same time. To accommodate this, we're also been talking to our um, facilities guys about creating 
four separate tent-like structures um, on the pool deck that will act as changing rooms. So that way we can have a number of different groups changing at the same time. And then while they are, um, while they are um, swimming, you know, and then after they're done rather, they, you know, they'll obviously get cleaned out before the next group goes in. And we know that the swim schedules are gonna need to be staggered a little bit, um, but everybody's gonna get the opportunity to swim. Um, and the pool, like we mentioned actually in the letter, I don't know if everybody had a chance to read that, but we're super excited because that, that whole pool got resurfaced and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, we were up there and I was tempted to jump in, but I was totally <laughs> good. So it's fine. I, I persevered. Um, but, uh, you know, we're really so super excited about it. It really does look um, terrific. So, so that's really, really cool. I just want to add, um, unfortunately this year, we will not be able to have our swim lessons and mainly because of the social distancing and the, the closeness that you need to be, especially with the beginner levels. Um, but what makes it more difficult is that that pod or bunk may not necessarily all be the same swim level. So therefore they would need to mix groups. Um, we are looking into, I know Nikki from our, our uh, phys ed department is looking into some individual or possibly group lessons that will be held outside of camp and we will, you know, obviously provide you with that information when it's available. Okay. Um, so as far as somebody had asked about um, how we plan to handle ONEG, um, and I guess that can really be said for any large um, camp-wide event. Um, you know, that's going to be part of what's a little different this year. Um, unfortunately, as much as we love to cram as many people as possible um, to, in that, in that, um, in that area, it's just, it's, it's not something that we're going to be able to do this year, but we, you know, the show must go on and we're going to still have all these types of programs. We're just going to do them in little smaller groups. So for example, you know, each unit will have their own own egg. Um, and they'll be able to, you know, still perform for each other and still still have a great time. And it's, it'll be still a really nice way to wrap up the week. That being said, we're also looking to keep doing some of the things that we were doing just, again, differently. It doesn't mean we're not going to have camp-wide special events. They're just going to be done differently and probably within their own units. Um, when the weather permits, if we can be out on the big field socially distanced with a, you know, with a, with a mic and a speaker, we're gonna do it. You know, we're gonna we're gonna make this a fun experience. Like like David said, it'll be different, but it's gonna be fun. Um, these kids, um, they need it. <laughs> they really. Um, I think everybody does. Everybody needs to um, just get back to a little bit of normal, and we're gonna do our best to provide that for them. Um, some other questions that came in were about Holocene and how a large portion of Holocene were trips. I wish we could still do the trips. Um, that is obviously off the table. So uh, we actually have a programmer that's gonna be working with uh, Mike, um, who's gonna be doing Holocene again, we're super excited. Um, and they're gonna be working out and have different activities and they're gonna come up with their own really fun, unique programs that are gonna work for them. They'll also get a chance to work with some of the specialists as well that they didn't always get a chance to in previous years. This year we actually have added specialists, so we're going to have extra people on hand uh, because now more than ever, you know, those programming pieces now that we're not doing trips and some other things are going to be really super important. Um, this is probably, I mean, Deb can, can speak for this. This is probably the first time um, this early, all of our uh, programmers and, and specialists are in place. We're unbelievably excited about that. They are top notch. Uh, this is one of our really best staff. Um, and this is, this is the year to have that fall into place. So we're really, really, really happy about that. And as I, I just want to add, and as unfortunate as it is that um, Camp Laurelwood won't be able to provide their overnight program this year, we are able to borrow, yes, borrow, some of their, their fantastic st staff. So Ken Yaffe is on board from, from um, Laurelwood and Marcy Steinberg. Um, who am I leaving out? Uh, 
We will, there, there will be a couple of other counselors <laughs> and, and lifeguards and stuff. We um we reached out, uh, you know, Deb reached out to a bunch of people. Um, once once they had canceled, you know, we obviously um, our hearts went out for them because <clears throat> we know what a difficult decision that was, and it's um, you know it was we were thrilled to say the least that we were able to 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 do this. So it's a, it's a, it's a huge team effort, but we're, we're really super, super psyched about it. Okay. And now I think we're on the question, will campers be allowed to play indoors? Um, I think I kind of touched on that question earlier. Uh, the only time that we will actually be staying inside just to repeat is, uh, a very dangerous, you know, a dangerous situation outside with the weather, extremely hot or thunder and lightning, we obviously will, will be coming inside. Um, we are hoping, hoping to be able to use some of the Bev Levy daycare rooms for um, basically just kind of drop off and there are bathrooms there, so it'll make it a little bit more convenient. But we, our intention is not to have an indoor camp for that age group. Our intention is to use it to has, house their belongings, you know, get their morning announcements done, and then get them out along with all the other campers and um, get them involved with the specialist. Um, I, I think I, I just want to make it clear with this with the specialist, um, the staff. Again, there's the group of ten. The two staff that will be with each group of 10. When that group of 10 goes to one of the specialists, that specialist will be wearing a mask and will need to social distance. So it will be the counselors that will be more of the hands-on and the specialist will be more like the teacher teaching from behind um, you know, the desk, if you want to look at it that way. Um, but they will be getting, uh, you know, all the activities we've done before. And as Allison mentioned, this is the first time we have everyone in place. And in addition to that, every one of our specialists right now is, is a returning staff member. So we, we know what they're like. We know they have experience. We know that they understand what that role means and um, the expectations. Um, will it be challenging? Absolutely, but I have, I have no doubt and, and feel very confident in our management staff and our specialists this year. Um, so I, that's, that's very exciting and, and takes a lot of stress uh, off the situation. Right. I think it's I think it's me now. Classrooms we talked about. Okay. I think I'm on. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, just to piggyback on what Deb said, you know, we, we talked about to our staff, we talked about um while this is gonna be a, a tough summer with everything being new and different, um, it's gonna be the most rewarding um that I think anybody has ever experienced because like I said a few minutes ago, it's it's coming at a time where the need is is so great. So we um, you know. We're, we're up for the task. Um, somebody had asked if the state pushes the date later, will there be a refund um, you know, coming to them? Um, as anybody can tell with my hair, we, are, <laughs> we, we understand that states sometimes change when they wanna do things. Um, but you know, we are, we're confident that um, you know, the, the date is gonna stay the same on the off chance it doesn't. Obviously camp won't start on the 22nd, it'll start when the state says we can start and and any anything that was paid for prior for like that week or whenever they say we can start will will obviously be returned we are um we are looking to be more than fair when it comes to that um we appreciate um you know already we have really you know almost half the people enrolled already and people the confidence that you have in us we are we are very grateful for so so we thank you for that um, some of the question was about um, tuition. Somebody, you've already registered for camp prior to all this going down. What, what happens next? So a, a couple of different things. So we went in and basically unenrolled your camper, um, leaving a credit on your account. So that credit can then be used when you sign up for whatever new session or sessions you're choosing to sign up for. So that money isn't gone, it's there, it's sitting there waiting for you to use it. On the off chance this isn't feeling comfortable for you and it's not something that you wanna do, just let us know, 
And obviously um, we can either um, do a couple of different things. We could put it towards next year's camp if you want. Um, we have an awesome Send the Kids to Camp Scholarship Fund if you want as well, if you want to put a portion of it towards that. Um, and another option obviously is if you um, would like a refund, we're gonna, we're gonna give you a refund. Um, but that's, that's kind of how we're working anything that was previously registered for. So I hope and, that- And I just that. want, excuse me, I just want to add, if you um, took advantage of our early bird savings, that is also in your credit. So you, you still will uh, receive that. Yes, that's sitting on your account. That is definitely sitting on your account. Um, somebody had also asked about um, vaccines and will that, those be required, um, will they be required to be up to date? Yes, um, all, all vaccines, all medicals, um, we're gonna ask you to please, um, they're, they're gonna need to be up to date. Um, as of right now, other than I think the parent manual, all forms are on the account. So once you go in and you register, if you go to the forms and documents section, you'll see all the forms that are there. If you had given us a medical form last year, they're good for three years. So if you had given us one last year and it was current and you think that it's still good, shoot one of us, shoot Sandy, myself, or Devin email. We'll look at the, the medical, we'll go back, and then if we need to push it forward for you, we will certainly do that. But as of right now, there are no medicals in there until you tell us to please look, look for, for last year's or you know whatever the case may be. Um, but all those forms, I know I originally said June 1st. I know June 1st is tomorrow, it's okay. <laughs> I went in and I changed the date on that so it doesn't show up red and looking mean. Um, we, we get it. But uh, the sooner you guys get that, those forms in, the better it is for all of us. So I'm gonna beg, implore, stress, please, 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 please do your forms, um, you know, as quickly as you can. Um, and then one other question that I had, and I think that's all that I have on my questions, so Sandy will be shooting other questions at us in a minute, um, was how many we're gonna be accepting into camp this summer. Um, we are looking to accept approximately 200 campers this summer. Um, that's kind of the, the sweet spot, um, you know, give, give or take. So that, that's where we are. Okay. I, I just jotted down a couple of things uh, as we were talking. Um, I just want everyone to know that priority is going to be given to those who were previously enrolled for this summer. Uh, that will be through uh, tomorrow night. After tomorrow night, we will take up the, the second priority will go to those in the community up until Friday. And then after Friday, we will take others outside of the community. Um, right about now, we, we are about halfway full to our capacity. We were originally on track to have about 400 campers so, um, you know, this is about half of the amount of, of campers that we originally were hoping to have. Um, and presently, about half of that number um, is already enrolled at this time. So, you know, I, I just want to make everyone aware of that. I also want to add that, um, which we didn't touch on, the site is going to be a little different and our policies in terms of coming in late or dropping you know, dropping a child off late or needing to pick them up for an appointment um, is going to be different. The only people that will be allowed on the campground would be camp staff and the campers. We will have a few um, staff people that are in golf carts that you will, you know, let us know ahead of time. We're hoping to have most of our, if not all of our communication done through a computer and um, a phone call. We don't wanna be passing the notes around like we, we have in the past. So, and again, all of this will be in your parents manual um, to make it clear and all detailed out for you. Um, but if you, for example, you have an appointment with your child at uh, two o'clock, you'll send us an email um, when you get to the parking lot, you will call us, call the office, and someone will bring your child down to meet you in the parking lot. 
So please keep that in mind. We don't want cars up on the, on the site. We don't want outsiders up on the site. Um, guests, parents, it'll all take place in the parking lot and, and not uh, past our, our welcome gate there. Um, I also want to say that uh, there was a question I see um, about the number of staff that we are taking each of those four weeks. Um, total in staff, we hire about 65 staff members. We have about 38 to around 40 um, counselors. We have the specialist. We, have, um, we will also have a nurse on uh, site this summer. Um, to handle any, you know, injuries or, or sick issues. Um, for those of you who are curious, any staff who does um, have a temperature or needs to quarantine for any reason, we will continue to pay them so they don't, you know, count on that money and, you know, throw the Tylenol in and I, I don't have the temperature. So. You know, we want everyone to be honest with us. We want us, you know, we want everyone to, to tell us what's going on. You know, we can't control what you do after four o'clock. We can't control what you do um, on the weekend. But as Allison said at the beginning, you know, do unto others as you, you want others to do for you. Um, and if you don't want, you know, the other 199 kids to be running around without masks and not social distancing on a weekend, um, please, uh, you know, respect that and, and do the same. We all want to stay safe. We all want to be able to offer 39 days of camp without having to close down. So, you know, I ask for everyone's help with that. Um, lastly, before we get into any other questions, I do want to um, also let you know, and I think it was mentioned in our letter, that we will be doing a separate Zoom meeting for the campers. Um, at that point, you know, maybe even uh, Scribbit might show up. You know, it'll be geared more towards our campers. They will be have an opportunity to meet their counselors. They'll have an opportunity to, you know, see their little bunk of four um, and get to know them. They'll see us without masks on. Um, and we will take them through, you know, the procedures so that on day one, they're not scared and they don't know who we are. So we want to make it as comfortable for everyone. Again, this is going to be new for us, new for you. You know, we just ask that uh, you're patient with us. Um, if there, there are additional concerns that we haven't addressed, please, please, please let us know. Um, you know, we are not experts on this. There's no manual for how to do this. Uh, if we, we haven't thought of something, please bring it to our attention and we will, you know, certainly address it. Um, and it, at this time, if I, I'm going to turn this to, back to Sandy to see if uh, we have further questions that we haven't touched on. All right. Thank you. We have a few more questions. Um, one of them that's been asked a couple times is just to reiterate, is there an expectation that the six foot social distancing will be going on in the pod between the campers and the two staff members that they're paired with? Very good question. And no, they, they do not have to social distance within that bunk. Thank you. What is the plan for swimming for non-independent swimmers, people who do not know how to swim at all? Not a problem. I think I can answer that one. I know Amy's staring at me, so <laughs> let me make sure I answer this one right. Um, we are going to, um, obviously everybody's gonna get tested the way where they would normally get tested on any summer, just so we are familiar and we know where each child's level is. Um, and anybody that requires a safety bubble, will be getting safety bubbles. So we're gonna be looking to make an investment this summer um, so that way everybody um, has a flotation device and is safe in the water. Um, those really little ones like the, the four-year-olds, um, you know, we're really gonna keep them towards the ramp and, and only on the ramp. I, I will also add when I was talking about my, our clean team, I, I left out um, that the JCC has ordered a few of those electrostatus sprayers. We are hoping that we will have two of those for camp, and that makes the, the sanitation very easy, very fast. Um, it's just a quick spray. You may have seen them on TV in schools and 
and businesses. Um, so there is no guarantee when that will be in, but we are hoping that uh, mid-June, late June, we will have access to that as well. Will we be playing Gaga this summer? I won't be, but everybody. <laughs> And uh, honestly, that was one of my most disappointing things because I will need to social distance because I will be with a number of different groups. But but the bunk of ten will be able to play Gaga. We will not be able to mix groups, but the, that group of ten will be able to play Gaga together. Will archery still be a special this year? Yes, archery will still be a specialist this summer. I saw Kyle on this call as well. He's <laughs> waving, he's, he's, he's fist pumping. Um, so yes, um, archery will also be on the table this summer. When will the priority registration end? Uh, the priority registration is going to end um, after tomorrow. Um, you know, it's really important. Um, we're hoping that this call answers your questions um, and obviously after the call, if we didn't get to them, please reach out to us. You know, tonight we're answering emails, sadly, pretty much 24 seven at this point. <laughs> we we want to make sure everybody is comfortable. Everybody gets their questions answered. Um, but we do need to um, open it up at this point, you know, after tomorrow to the rest of the, um, to the rest of our, our JCC members. Will parents be asked to wear masks at pickup and drop off? Judy is shaking yes. <laughs> yes, yes they will. Are campers allowed to bring in a kosher treat for their birthday if it's just being fed to their group? Um, I'm gonna... We're gonna need to think about that yeah. one. My, my guess is most likely not unfortunately, but we, we, we are the, uh, the pros of fun and we will turn a birthday into one like no other. Will there still be dress up theme days on Fridays? Of course there will be. And as you yes. see Jess, Jess, if anybody can see Jess <laughs> in, her, in her box, um, she has Disney day already penciled in. Of course, every day is Disney day for her, but, but yes, they will absolutely still be dress up days for sure. Are the 200 camper maximum per session or for the entire summer? Per session. Per session. All right, that looks like the end of the questions. We can definitely take some more questions or if you feel more comfortable getting a one-on-one -on -one answer, email summercamp at jccnh.org. Um, yeah, it looks like some of them, I'm actually gonna, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit new to the Zoom thing. I know that's shocking, uh, but <laughs> I see some of these say there's some private ones um, just, just, to, uh, just to me, so I'm not sure, San, if you can see those. So I'm gonna, just one of the questions that people did ask um, and were concerned about was about the, um, sorry, I'm, my, my mic and stuff are, are having an issue right now. Um, can everybody still hear me? Yes. Okay. Great. Yes. Um, one of the um, one of the questions talked about if a child in my you know um, my child if another camper tests positive and we have to be asked to quarantine and leave for those 14 days, will we get a refund? And, and the answer is yes on that. Um, you know, if we're telling you you need to stay home, um, absolutely. Um, you know, we will we will we will do that for sure. Um, I think a lot of people were asking me that question um, and going through them, I think uh, people still want to be admitted into the rooms, um, but so that's one of the things. Um, somebody asked if they drop off large case of water for just their child, can that be distributed? That's going to kind of be tough. It's something we can look into. Um, it's something that we can absolutely talk about. Um, it's just that I'm just picturing 200 campers and 200 <laughs> cases of water and how we would go about doing that. We'll take I'm not them. saying we'll no, take but them. we're going we're gonna to try to figure out a way. I mean, like, like Deb said before, no child will go without something to drink. You know, um, that's, again, that's a safety thing and, and everybody is, is going to get a chance to, uh, 
everybody's going to have water. So and Deb really, really, really loves that cooler. I can't explain to you how much she loves that cooler. Um, you know, but, but she does. Um, I have a couple yeah. more questions. Sure. Okay. okay. Um, if a child's group, if a camp group needs to be quarantined for the two weeks, will the siblings of that camp group also need to quarantine? The, the sibling of the child who has the temperature will need to be, but the sibling's bunk will not. Okay. Will, um, if somebody has a child signed up and a sibling now wants to sign up, can they receive sibling preference as well? Preferential sign up. Okay, so if somebody wasn't signed up prior, but one of the kids was, and one yeah. of them was going to go to a sleepaway camp, can they now get in? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I have a couple questions asking if the CIT program will happen this summer. The CIT program will happen in some form or another. We are working on the details of that and we'll certainly get back to, to the CITs. I know we have about 14 or 15 who have been interested and are very excited about starting. Um, so we are, are working on the details um, of that program. Is the number you, I'm, sorry. Pot. I'm sorry, excuse me one second. I just want to go back to um, the, that question with the siblings and if one child has a temperature. Um, we're going to ask again, and we can't stress this enough for, for every family to be transparent with us because we, we don't go home with your child and we don't know if, if mom tested positive or grandma did and now she's you know, been spending the weekend with your, your child. So if there is a situation um, of someone in the family, even though they're not at camp, that same policy is gonna need to hold true. And we're gonna need your honesty on that for you to be open and honest um, and, and kind of, you know, trigger that into that small group as opposed to it becoming a, a major problem within the camp population. I'm sorry, will, the, will the camp counselors be one boy and one girl? Ideally, yes. I'm hoping to to have that. Yeah, I can't guarantee that it's going to you know end up that way. I'm going to select um, you know the the most qualified uh, staff that I can. But um, the plan is to have a, a male, a female, and a co-ed group of ten. If the CIT program for some reason cannot occur, can the campers from the CIT program potentially join Halitzim if there's room in the group? Absolutely. Yes. How are we doing, Sam? Um, I think we're about finished. Um, most, yeah, there's some questions that are more VP. Um, it looks like we've hit all the questions. Um, a couple people I responded to personally, um, and we'll reach back out to you by email if the question was a little too uh, broad. I have one more question. If one child has no temperature, but has been asked to quarantine a camper in the bunk as COVID, does the sibling have to quarantine too? The sibling of the kid who is asked to quarantine but isn't sick. Stan, I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit and, and I, I missed some of that question. So I, I, I'm sorry, but can I ask you to just- I'll repeat it. It's, it's a little bit long, that's all. If one child has no temperature, but has been asked to quarantine because another kid in the group has COVID, does the sibling have to quarantine too? The sibling of the kid who is asked to quarantine but isn't sick? No. no. Okay. No. Okay. Um, um, okay. Uh, looks like somebody sent you a question that she's not sure if you saw it. Um, Erica, if you want to 
send that to me. Um, I can certainly answer. Um, somebody wants, somebody asked about swimsuits and whether we're going to be able to help the little ones with their stuff. Yes, absolutely. Um, the counselors will, will have masks on and will, will absolutely help um, do that. Um, it looks like we have a question about how to register. Um, in that first email that I sent you guys that said, yay, registration's over. Actually, I think that might have come from Deb. I'm not entirely sure. Um, we've been sending, um, we've been tag teaming on who sends things out. Um, there should be a link in there. If for some reason you don't have that anymore, it's not a problem. If you just go to our website and click register for camp, that'll take you through it as well. So, um, you know, you can, you can go that route. Either one of those was, uh, was able to do it. Um, okay, I'm, so I'm looking at Erica's question now, but Deb, if you want to. Well, there is a question um, I see here. Will there be any checking if families in the bunk are healthcare mm -hmm. workers? Um, I believe I answered that. You know, there's no real way for us to check that or, you know, uh, guarantee that. We're just, again, asking everyone to, to be honest and open with us. Um, and everyone, you know, will be treated the same in terms of the temperature taking, uh, whether it's staff or campers. Um, and, and Erica, to answer your question about when can you register, you can register um, on Tuesday after the, um, after that, that uh, pre-registration, after the people who already registered, after their priority is over, you can absolutely go in on Tuesday and, and, and do that. Not a problem. See thumbs up. We like that. Perfect. Um, I'm scrolling through to see. I have um, a couple more. Somebody wants to know if there's going to be color wars. We can't answer that. We don't talk about color war until it's just all of a sudden it shows up. We will so, have color war, but we, no, we never have color war. We don't know, it's why always you know a what secret. color war is. So you can't. Depends on the children's behavior whether we have color yeah. war. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Um, and somebody asked about siblings who are the same age, whether they'll be placed in the same group. Um, so if you if that's who you request to be in their same group, then they'll be in their same group. I and mean, I guess ultimately, as I think this out in my head, that makes sense. Um, and it's it's obviously um, you know safer to certainly do that, and we'll be happy to do it. Um, please understand. One of the things that we talked about in the letter was about requesting who's with who. We we would love to meet every single request and have all all everybody be with their six friends um we're gonna do the best that we can please keep it to the one that we ask you know just you request one that person needs to also request you it needs to be reciprocal um this year is going to be you know it's going to be a tough year and we really want to um you know accommodate everybody um but we ask we're gonna have to be really strict on that so that's <clears throat> that's what we ask. We will do the best that we can. I promise you that. We want everybody to have fun. We want everybody to be with their friends. I, just, um, just to add to that, and you know, it's not just so everyone's aware. It's not you're only going to see those ten kids all summer. Um, there's an opportunity, and I'm just going to throw at this as a scenario. Let's say there's the arts and crafts specialist in point A six feet to the right of that that specialist is is bunk number one six feet to the left of that specialist is bunk number two so they can actually have a competition they could have a race they could do a, a color war if their behavior is good um so there are activities that could be done we are we are going to be create creative we're going to be thinking outside the box um, but those activities, you know, although they're, they're going to be done together, they're going to be done separated, if that made any sense. But, um, you know, we're not erasing everything from, from our programming in the past and just saying, you know, it's this isolation of, of 10 children and that's all they're going to see. We're going to try to make it as safe as possible and allow them to do activities with others without, you know, with keeping that, that rule of the social distancing. Um, I saw there was another question and I was just messing with it. Um, it looks like somebody's having trouble getting that link. Um, the link isn't working for them. Honestly, um, you may have to clear your cookies or something in your, in your, um, on your web browser. I was able to just do it. So I'm not entirely sure why you are having that issue. Um, if you continue to have that issue, let me know. I can certainly reach out to the CampMinder team. We don't host it. 
Um, you know, that's done by somebody else that we use, we use CampMinder. Um, but I was able to just um, just now reach it. So I'm not I'm not sure why you're getting that error. I'm sorry you're getting that error, but um, I, I was able to do so. Um, that being said, if you continue to have that error and you're concerned and you want to make sure you get in, just let's, you know, one of us know and we can certainly go in and, and, and register and, and get you guys set up. We're not we're not looking to to make you jump through hoops. So it's it's not a problem. Okay. Um, Another question is, uh, how will we keep four groups separated in the pool? That's going to be, counselors are going to need to be working and kids are going to be asked. We're going to have lifeguards um, on deck making sure that campers aren't straying and getting too far over to the other group. It's a nice sized pool. You know, there's, there's a little bit of play in that if they venture out a little bit, but, um, you know, we'll, staff will be on hand to make sure just like in any activity whether they're on the sports field and there's more than one group on the and sports field. And there's there's also buoys that separate it that we can you know just quarter off the pool as well if, if need be. I mean sure that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else Sand? Will some oh, have good. already been grant made the same? I'm sorry? Okay. Will scholarships that have already been granted remain the same? Awesome. Um, Ooh, sorry. Ooh, sorry. Ooh, sorry. Uh, yes. Um, the scholarships, I mean, um, full disclosure, our scholarship fund is, is considerably less right now um, than, it, than it's ever been. You know, this is a hard time for everybody. Um, and, you know, we rely on, on families and, and people to, to obviously fund that scholarship. And, um, you know, it's it's been tough and you know it's um it's a big ask and it's it's tough for families right now and we completely get that um so it's not as robust as it once was um but everything that has been committed so far we're good and you know we're on board um we're possibly able to to do something else but you know we still have a couple that are in the waiting list hopper so um you know i don't know whether we're going to be able to open it up at this time for more, but those, whatever the amount you were awarded, you, you were awarded that amount um, and we'll honor that. That being said, it's, it's, really, um, it's really important that you had already told Sandy that you were accepting that scholarship, right? So, I mean, not everybody um, sent back the thing that said they accepted the scholarship. Everybody who said they accepted the scholarship and communicated with Sandy, your, your scholarship is intact. Will we be wearing camp shirts this summer? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. The staff will be wearing camp shirts. They will be all different colors from all different past years. And the campers, we are, we are working on that. They will be getting something, whether it's the same as staff, different ones from different years. Um, we do have a little advantage, and I, we actually talked about this yesterday, of knowing that it's a set number and set sizes. So we, we might be able to do that. I don't want to guarantee anything at this point, but um, we are hoping to be able to, to get you shirts. Okay. All anything right, else? that looks like all I have. All right, I don't know if um, Scott or Judy had anything that we missed out or want to add. No, I think that I think that you did a good job in answering. I know that there's um, some thoughts in this that um, we'll take back and and hammer into some policies. Um, I think everyone heard um, that a lot of thought has already gone into it, and and I know um, for me, I'm sure for Judy and and for Deb, Alice, and Sandy, and all the rest of the camp staff, hearing people's questions is helpful in going back. Um, you know. The, the camp staff isn't working in a vacuum. There's um, a subcommittee of the board of directors that's made up of um, you know, JCC board members, JCC members, uh, physicians, uh, community leaders, who are all working very hard on policies for the JCC and all its programs. And they're a real resource for camp and, and for the rest of the facility. And, and all of these questions will, you know, any that are unable to be answered will get put into that hopper and we'll get back good answers um, from it. So thank you everyone for coming. 
Um, I, I hope that this was, was helpful and um, please take advantage of emailing questions to Deb, Allison, or Sandy if there's anything that, that they were unable to cover or any concerns that, that come to mind. I, I do think this is really a cooperative um, effort. And so uh, thinking through some of those so things I, will be so really I helpful. definitely take teamwork um, to have a, a fantastic summer for everybody involved. So I appreciate uh, all your questions. Um, again, if you have further questions, send them our way. Happy to answer them. We want this to be comfortable for everybody um, and as safe as possible for everybody to enjoy. So thank you very much. All right, bye-bye everybody. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for everybody staying on mute all that time. That was impressive. <laughs>